Sega. Hey everyone, we hope you guys are enjoying the brand new demo for Sonic Generations that's just gone live on both Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. I'm Aaron Weber, Associate Brain Manager for Sonic Generations here at Sega of America and a longtime Sonic fan. Today, we're going to take you through one of my speedruns of Green Hill Act 2, which you can play in this demo. I'll show you some of my own tips and tricks to performing the fastest possible speedrun of the level. Now, as Modern Sonic, there are a few good keys to a good speedrun. First and foremost, stick to the high path. The high path is the hardest one to get on and to stay on, but in almost all cases, it's also the fastest. Second, boost often. The boost is key to a good time, but the challenge is in precision platforming while you're boosting. You can't just hold down boost and hope for a fast run. It's going to take some practice. Third and finally, be creative. Sometimes the best shortcuts are found either on accident or in finding ways to skip or bypass elements of the level that might normally slow you down. All that said, let's begin. As you start the level, the first key moment is the ramp that you see right here. Now, if you run off that ramp without boosting, you'll have to get past the enemies, then make your way to the spring, then finally bounce up and move on. Instead, make sure you're boosting as you go up the ramp in the beginning. This will give you enough extra air to pull off a second boost as you reach the crest of that jump. If you time this right, that second boost will take you all the way over the enemies and straight on to the next part of the level. Just after this is the second key part here. Stick to the right and jump at the perfect time to make it through that orange ring. Now typically, most people would actually hit those springs and just keep going. In this case, you want to get a bit creative. The spring slows you down slightly, so I recommend a quick jump and then a boost straight to that rail on the left instead. This trick is only going to save you a few tenths of a second, but it all adds up in the end. From here on in, you're clear to boost fully for a little bit. This section of the game first introduces the player to boosting, so if you can stay in the middle, you'll pick up a lot of rings and defeat enemies that should get your boost back up to full right as you finish this loop de loop Next up is the first major branching path. This platform right here is the start, and you'll need to jump on here and then into that orange ring to get to the high path. You may need to let go of the boost here, especially on your first couple attempts, but with practice, you'll find ways to keep your speed going even as you hit the ring. Now anytime you get an opportunity to do tricks, my recommendation is to do only the tricks you need for boost and to finish as soon as you can. The finished part of the trick pushes you forward faster, saving you some time. Here, if you're still in the air, you can also stomp your way down and boost quickly to save more time. Next up are the three Buzz Bombers. Here you want to only destroy the first two, not all three, and as soon as Sonic hits that high point of his balance from that second Buzz Bomber, you boost forward. This will shoot you right over that final enemy and with just enough height to reach the platform. Slide underneath the totem pole, start boosting, and you're in the clear for a couple seconds. The paths all converge here and then immediately open up once more into three layers. You want to jump up here and stay on the rail up top, then jump a second time to go through those orange rings, onto the next rail, straight to this ramp. Here do one or two tricks and quickly finish the combo. Now boost like your life depends on it, and get ready for some rail grinding. All of the orange rings right here are bad, very bad evil kitten killing orange rings. They're really bad, so make sure not to hit any of them or you'll lose some time. You can pick up a few helpful rings for your boost meter and still get the dash pad boost by jumping from the right or the left rail to the middle just after you grab those rings right there. Now if you stop boosting during this cutscene, it can be difficult to get it going again, so make sure you don't let go of the boost at all. Through this rainbow ring, do a trick, finish, dodge the fish, boost again, and now jump right here. These orange rings will take you up to the next railing. You're going to want to make your way up to this high path again. Jump a second time and prepare for the wall jump. You're going to want to jump as high as you can to get onto the wall here, then spring back and forth, and with one more boost, you'll get going as soon as you can up the top. Do note that if you screw up the wall jump, or else if you start too low on that wall, it's actually just faster to stick to the rail and let it loop around. The higher you jump before you touch the wall, the better. The next part's quite tricky, and I even messed it up during this run, but here's what you do. Boost, slide under the wall, now keep boosting, or boost again, and jump. When done correctly, you'll bounce off the crab meat straight into the two buzz bombers and be right on your way. If you mess up here, use either the homing attack or a quick boost to keep going. Next, you go through the corkscrew and are nearing the end of the level. To save just a bit of time, jump over this ramp and boost when you're in the air to keep your momentum up. Keep boosting through the crab meat enemies to refill your boost meter, then slide, boost, slide again, boost, hop by tapping the A button, and into the air you'll go. Your first instinct here is to homing attack, but you don't want to do that. Instead, boost and then immediately stop before you touch the bridge. This will destroy the bridge, taking you to the hidden path below, and it's one of the only cases where the lower section is actually faster than the high. There are two large batches of rings here, and you want to grab at least one to ensure you can boost all the way to the end. Now boost non-stop, being careful to avoid hitting the edges, and do only one to two tricks on the ramp. Finish the combo, boost again, and jump to the right or left to make sure the dash pads as you come upon the goal. A couple seconds more, and you're there. How do you rank? Here's some milestones to set for yourself as you play through the demo. If you're right around 2 minutes, 30 seconds, not bad. Lots of room for improvement though, so keep at it. If you're right around 2 minutes, 10, getting close, keep practicing and you'll get it. If you're just under 2 minutes, good work. You're a hardcore Sonic fan and this level is a cakewalk for you. 
If you're right around 155, excellent job. You're above and beyond most fans. Now, strive for perfection in shaving off just a few more seconds. And if you're under 1 minute 50 seconds, you are a true blue Sonic speedrunner. Impress your friends, your family, and send a video of your run into us to enter in the Sonic 20th Anniversary Statue Giveaway. Let us know what you thought in the comments below, add in your own tips and tricks, and share with fellow Sonic fans your own discoveries on ways you can make your speedruns even faster. That's all from us here at SEGA. Keep an eye out for more from us as Sonic Generations is out in just one week. And if you haven't yet, make sure to pick up the bonus Casino Night pinball level, free themes, and more by pre-ordering at GameStop. We'll see you guys again this November 1st, and until then, here's a quick look at the speedrun without any interruptions. Enjoy.